Dear friends of PowerShots TV, positive energy in Europe. Today I'm in the European Commission and it's really my great pleasure to welcome the Director General for Health and Food Safety, Mr. Prat Monet. Welcome. Hello. 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 Director General, food, health, safety is for sure a very positive issue where we are, we citizens are benefiting every day. But maybe explain us a little bit your work and maybe give us a concrete example how citizens really benefit of your work of Europe. Yes, indeed, we try to help because indeed both health and food safety are very important for citizens. There's a limit to what Europe can do for citizens, but we really try to help. In the field of health, for example, we try to bring together the efforts that are made by the hospitals, by countries, by health ministries, uh, to make sure that the effort is shared. For example, on diseases that are so difficult, so complex, that no single country, even a big country, can deal with. Then we have a task of authorizing medicines, uh, because medicines must be put on the market, but they must be safe. And therefore, we work with the European Medicines Agency to make sure that medical products are actually safe when they reach citizens. So that's for health, for example. On food safety, it's again very different, because there, uh, the challenge is different, is to make sure that the uh, safety concerns uh, that have to be respected for food to be put on the, the kitchens of children, that the way we treat animals is correct, uh, and there the EU has, has an important role because we have a lot of power to decide what should be the conditions, what should be the requirements for safety. So there we have an enforcement power, for example, to do, to do inspections, to make sure that uh, the veterinary offices do their job, both in the EU and in the countries that export food or food stock to us. Okay. But, then, but then there's another area that is very important, which is that we always are at risk of a pandemic, of uh, some sort of pest or actually some human infection, and we have all known terrible words like Ebola. And there, the task of Europe is to make sure that because we have no borders, this is not a problem to control infection. So it's really important for us to give really the elements of coordination, the elements of communication between countries to address the uh, uh, circulation of infectious diseases for humans and for animals. But uh, I'm very surprised that you say, okay, you can cross, for example, for these infections, the borders of Europe. But the other countries, which are not non-EU uh, countries, they accept this, or how do you get this influence, really, that they say, okay, we accept the rules of, of Europe? Well, yes, well, this, this we can do, because we have clear rules as to how to access the internal market of the, of the Union. So countries that want to export to such a huge market of half a billion people as Europe, mm -hmm. they have to accept that we have safety standards that we have to respect. Yeah. It's not always easy, because some countries actually may be as safe as us, but, but they ensure safety in different ways. And we must make sure that we have a good understanding of the final result, not just yeah. the way we deal with this. Yeah, because also uh, in Europe, they are not only citizens, they are also animals. I'm a really big animal lover. Yes. And I saw that you really, uh, your work is also the safe of farm animals and to ensure that all is okay. Maybe explain us a little bit about yes, this, yes. because all animals lovers will love this. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm an anthropologist by training, so I'm, you know, I'm, I should be the first to be, to be sure that we treat other animals well, too. And, and indeed, there's two aspects here. One is just to keep animals safe in our interest. You know, in Europe, we slaughter six billion chickens every year. Mm -hmm. 200 every second. Uh, it, it's, it's extraordinary. It means that really we have a real responsibility to make sure that these animals actually are, are, are treated safely, but also that they are treated humanely. Mm -hmm. uh, this is to a great extent the responsibility of countries, but to the extent that animals travel across borders, uh, is also our responsibility. Yeah. So we have a number of, of measures to make sure that the, the right conditions are respected. And what you achieved, like for example, an example maybe in this sector? Well, uh, for example, we can provide guidelines as to how the transport of animals should be insured across borders, within and outside the EU. Then, of course, it's difficult to make sure that this is implemented because mm -hmm. there's so many animals circulating yeah. that enforcement is difficult and we have to do with countries. But we have this task of making sure that the transport of animals is, is properly mm -hmm. addressed and that maybe the measures that are necessary, for example, uh, again, for farming animals, that their living conditions. Uh, I'll give an example that is not very well known. Europe is perhaps the only part of the world where we have forbidden, clearly and, and, and without exceptions, the use of antibiotics to promote uh -huh. the growth of animals. Yes. Uh, this is That's actually the, I, I, not I, I, good for I, I, animals, and it's not good for human beings. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is, I think, a good example as to how Europe uh, can be ahead of others, perhaps, uh, although we still have to do better.
No, great. And then, yes, uh, maybe the last question uh, to the citizen, perhaps, uh, where you say, for example, even as a politician, in all your work, just tell me maybe your best experience, your most positive experience, and also what is the challenge, your challenge for the future? Uh, well, perhaps the, the, the most positive experience in my career was uh, having the privilege of setting up the Erasmus uh, program that we see now, because, you know, there's no better example of how Europe can be useful for citizens than to help citizens become better people by traveling and knowing others. So that was really a privilege. I'm really, really very proud of having had that, that, that task. And a challenge, well, what I'm confronted every day is that how difficult the challenges we have, because we live in such a complex world, uh, to ensure that we have a good balance between, for example, producing enough food for people and doing it so safely. That, and, and it's so difficult to make policy just on the basis of evidence because things are politicized, because yeah. uh, people don't trust sometimes yeah. the authorities. And the, the challenge of making sure that we take informed decisions is really very important. So I would really like to make sure that the European Commission and, and uh -huh. my department helps them, helps political decision makers make informed decisions for citizens. Uh, it is a challenge, but it, it's so exhilarating because you can actually make a difference for people. <laughs> As long as we believe you will arrive. Yes. No, really. Thank you much uh, for your, your positive energy. Thank you. It was really my pleasure. Thank you. It was a pleasure. And yes, uh, people outside, really, yes. thanks much for listening. Health is very important. I mean, we have to eat good and so on. But I strongly, I really strongly believe that health is also starting right here. Because I think if you are positive in your mind and uh, if you give positive energy out, it's the first, it's the first step to be healthy, to, give, uh, to, to, to live a better life for, for yourself and for other people. Thanks much and bye-bye. Thank you.